Denmark's Ministry of Digital Affairs is making a fairly rapid transition, at least as far as government goes, to using Linux, LibreOffice, and other free and open source software solutions. They're expecting to have half of their staff switched over by the end of this August, and the rest will transition by September to November of this year, which will be just in time for everyone in these offices to escape Microsoft's clutches before the end of Windows 10 support, which I suspect might have been the thing that pushed this department over the edge. But the primary reason for the switch given by Denmark's Minister for Digital Affairs was to strengthen the country's digital sovereignty, which I absolutely agree with. It's always mind boggled me a bit to see how much governments end up depending on proprietary Microsoft products, especially government institutions outside of the United States. You see, Microsoft is a US company, so there's not a whole lot of recourse for foreign governments that are displeased with the service, besides, I guess, levying fines against Microsoft. And then if they don't pay those fines, eventually they get kicked out of the country, but that obviously still would not solve the government's immediate problem of getting denied service by Microsoft. And even if these governments were pleased with Microsoft's products and services, Having all of your social service depend on proprietary software from a foreign company in a foreign nation is a huge national security concern. And these concerns grow with each new version of Windows because more and more of its functionality is moved to the cloud, making it more difficult to isolate from Microsoft's direct interference. But even if Windows and Office wasn't a spyware-ridden mess, Government services depending on them still puts taxpayer money in the hands of Microsoft. And this is a really rotten deal for the taxpayer when you think about it, because even if you personally have never used a Microsoft product in your life, your government is still forcing you to give money to this company. Anytime you go into a police station, the DMV, a public school, any place, that is funded with tax dollars, that has computers running windows in them, just know that you or someone in your neighborhood, someone in your city, bought the licenses for the software and the operating systems running on those computers when they could have had a free alternative. And the license fees really add up quickly, even if they're getting a volume discount for Windows, which I'm sure they are because an individual Windows 11 license costs $140 and Office 365 costs $100 per year for an individual. So maybe just picture a crisp $50 bill in place of every one of these computers in your city. That $50 was spent unnecessarily. And I'm surprised that I don't see as many people here in the United States thinking about it like this as an argument for switching government services to Linux and LibreOffice. There's a lot of concern over government spending right now and using free software is not only going to get rid of software license fees, but it can also prolong the life of the computers, the actual hardware, that is being used because oftentimes these computers in facilities end up getting replaced just because they are no longer compatible with the latest version of Windows and the different pieces of software that they're using day to day, they start to no longer get updates for that older version of Windows that those old computers are still running. But of course, Linux is much more performant on older hardware and you can have security patches applied to keep those older systems and those older pieces of software more secure as well. And if the government shifted to using Linux and LibreOffice, this could also be a way to create jobs for people to learn Linux support or even support for a specific distro that the government chooses to use. And the more talented folks could even go so far as to fork the code base of these open source apps to customize everything to a specific department's liking in order to help them improve their workflows. These departments could hire local people to fix bugs, create documentation, test software, and after a few iterations of this, we may end up with systems that become more and more efficient over time instead of less efficient. 
at least as far as the software is concerned, because if you go to the DMV and the person working there just doesn't want to do their job, it doesn't matter whether their computer is running Windows 11 bogged down with spyware or Arch Linux with a keyboard-centric DWM rice. But instead, so many institutions here in the United States would rather pay through the nose to get technical support from Microsoft or some third-party company that is Microsoft certified. And the support is usually slow, expensive, and half the time, it doesn't even end up fixing your problem. And most of the time, it's not even the fault of the support team because if you've been in the position where you've had to fix some kind of software issue on a Windows machine, you probably had the experience of the operating system actively trying to fight you off from fixing the problem. Meanwhile, on Linux, if you just have the patience to actually read the output from your terminal and then reference what it's saying with the Arch Wiki, you can fix practically anything without ever spending a dime. Europe's pursuit of digital independence may very well bring about the year of the Linux desktop. Germany's northernmost state is also undergoing the open source transition from Microsoft Office to LibreOffice. They're transitioning from Outlook to Open Exchange, and they're transitioning from Windows to Linux. And the effort in Germany is supposed to go beyond just free and open source client devices and client software. They also plan to transition from using Microsoft controlled cloud infrastructure to German controlled infrastructure, which is absolutely fantastic. I mean, if I were a German citizen, I would hate to think that something like a driver's license renewal could be delayed by something as stupid as OneDrive having a syncing issue. And beyond the benefits of digital sovereignty, this German state believes that they'll be able to save tens of millions of euros by one, not only not having to pay for license fees, but also not having to pay tech experts to install mandatory updates from Microsoft that seemingly come out of nowhere when another horrible vulnerability is found in the core of the OS. And in my research for this video, I actually discovered that France has been way ahead of the curve in transitioning their police force to use open source software. They actually started back in 2005 by adopting the OpenOffice.org Office Suite and making the .odf format its nationwide standard for document encoding. They even deployed over 100,000 Linux machines within their police force. French police were so upset with the death of Windows XP that they went ahead and developed their own Linux. They call it Gendbuntu. <laughs> So apparently that's what they're using instead. And if the French police can do it, I think just about every police force in the world should be able to relieve itself from Microsoft's clutches. So if you are paying for proprietary licenses from Microsoft or some other company right now, which you probably are if you're paying taxes in a country that's not using Linux, then you should demand that your government stop wasting your money and start using free and open source software. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, based.win, where you can buy my awesome merch or accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% store-wide discount when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.